Cool. Great. So, um, pleased and honored to welcome Mary Brennan uh, all the way from Nelson Mandela Bay, Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Welcome, Mary. Thanks, Sunny. Good to be here. There are only a couple of payment methods that exist in the world. Everyone ever invented still exists. The introduction of a new one is not trivial. In the history of, of, of recorded history, 2000 odd years, we've had coins, paper money, you know, coins, shells, right? Paper money, checks, cards, what have I left off? Transfers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five credit. in 2000 years. Well, credit, the actual payment method, the, the currency, mm -hmm. um, it was coins, it was right. So we're oh. talking about introducing a new one of those. Colossal. Right. And going live and introducing something like that into a market that trades trillions and billions a day and whatnot. Um, needs a sandbox, I think. Absolutely. I think due to the scale, simply the scale of what we're doing, that's the only thing that exactly. hasn't been tested, that is, is the scale. But, but it needs trust, right? The key, key element with money is trust. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, there's no better example of that, right, than now, where governments are just issuing new money, just willy-nilly, right? couple of hundred billion there, a couple of trillion there in the US, you know. Um, yet nobody's freaking out. Nobody's, it's because people trust that people are acting in the interests of the system. And um, it's the fundamental part of um, any commercial um, relationship. And money is such a personal thing because it's the the store of your efforts, your labor. So to introduce something that people are going to trust, say, well, I've, I've worked for X number of years, hours, months, whatever, I've toiled, mm. and um, somebody has given me this. This is mm. now the store of my hard work. This is my, my mm. that I can now go and spend um, and give it to somebody else who has got the same desires, right? And then, you want to be able to, um, when you get home to your village or whatever, and you want to spend it, you want to be able to spend it there. And so um, it's a huge, huge issue. And to transact um, in any level of scale, it needs the trust. And the sandbox is a six month opportunity to get everybody's buy-in. That's the way I see it. I don't know what you think. Well, I think it's absolutely. Um, I think it's absolutely correct. We need to, we need to absolutely get everybody's buy-in and trust. And I think the regulators watching this and the people who are in vulnerable communities who want to use this as a tool um, also need the assurance that this is done in a way which is meaningful and regulated. Well, I think it's because uh, of the scale that we are going at, and because of the um, the user group that we are actually serving. Um, I think there's quite an important part about. But well, funny, I, I, I'm not so sure that that's the the biggest advantage of the sandbox because I think like in Kenya with Mpesa, mm. um, they just let them introduce it into the market and came along and regulated afterwards because there was nothing there. There are only five million bank people and um, this was completely new. It wasn't chasing mm -hmm. anybody else out the market and there was nothing to lose. I think why the sandbox is important in a South African context and in a probably a, a greater international context is it's not the case anywhere else. South Africa, we have something to lose. If uh, if we introduced a payment system that was open to fraud and abuse, it could bring down the existing system. And I think that's why it's 
different uh, and why the sandbox is so important. Um, I think is the one thing. And the other thing that I really liked um, about the call we had and um, that Q&A call um, um, regarding the sandbox was the important thing is that it's not necessarily only um, the systems and, and the new fintech things that need to be tested. There also are instances where the laws are going to have to change because the laws are very outdated. Um, and no one conceived of these things when those laws were written. And it's a sandbox uh, environment for those um, laws to be, um, to be, to, and, and laws, regulations, um, uh, rules um, need to be changed. And, and the other thing is that what, what I think is brilliant is getting five regulators together because there's, a, there's no clear, you know, if things are going to cross over and bleed and you need to look at it uh, across the whole ecosystem. And I can't think of a, of a, of a better approach to introduce innovation because, sure, um, I've been trying to innovate in this sector for so long. Can you see I've nearly, uh, nearly pulled out all my hair? People are so risk averse, you know, with, understandable. But then how do you innovate? It's been, been frustrating. And I, I think this is, this is um, going to be the unlock. Um, creating an environment where um, building trust, I guess, that's the main thing. Eh? Sandbox equals trust, right? Absolutely. It's also, um, it enables us to to move forward with our ecosystem with a, a level of transparency as well that's kind of unprecedented because we are going to be disclosing to the regulators all of our model, you know, right the way through because we, as we, as each process and as each item is brought into the field and tested and deployed and rolled out, there will be full disclosure of our relationships, of our revenue shares, of, of how this works. And I think that's also quite new and, and novel and not novel, but actually quite poor to our <laughs> Well, you know what, you, you joke, it is novel. Um, I, I challenge anybody watching this to go and um, go to their bank's website and look up the fee structure. And you yeah. work out how they work out what your fees are every month. Um, that lack of transparency and where the money goes and who makes what and how um, is um, a big problem, I think. Um, it's, yeah. there, a lot of ills are hidden in the dark. Um, so yes, I think that is a, a very valid point. I think the other thing that, that the sandbox manages Who's going to own the blockchain that people use for the new money? Mm. You know, can it be Facebook and Visa and MasterCard? And can mm. it be at and And do we want it to be? And, 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 and can it be the central bank? And who, you know, these, these are models um, that need to be figured out um, because it's a new paradigm. And yeah. um, I think even China is saying it's got to be done in partnership with Alibaba and you know, the guys that are storing digital money, we need to work together with them. Um, um, and it's got to be a, a, a public-private partnership. It's got to be um, uh, a new model um, where, you know, a, a partnership between technology providers and, and, and the bank. We yeah, call, it, call it a public utility blockchain. Um, yeah. Um, so let's discuss a little bit of the controversial, what I think can see is where the, a bit more of the controversy or where the regulatory gray space is. And um, essentially um, what we're doing, what you've designed through the instrument of the, the ZART fiat-backed uh, token is essentially what people are writing now is a central bank dis, uh, dis digital currency. It's an electronic form of legal tender. So that's the model that we've been working with for years and that's what we'll be rolling out. And now as regulators are starting to get their teeth around how they're going to regulate crypto token and how this whole thing is going to work, that's the one area they kind of like are a bit eyes wide for, okay? So from my side, from what I'm seeing is that us rolling this out at scale is proving that concept beyond the shadow of a doubt. And then we put we get we offer we have an opportunity for the central bank to discuss the key issue around that which is going to be issuance and how much gets created and added to the economy 
Yeah, absolutely, because there, there, yeah. there are a number of ways that can be approached, right? Yeah. It can be done um, uh, through the existing money supplier. So instead of printing uh, notes, uh, they could just issue um, the currency, um, in which case it falls under the existing money supply. Um, maybe they want to um, issue um, you know, a separate float for digital currency. And these are the, the, the decisions that obviously they uh, are going to need to make. Um, um, what one needs to have a look at is how's it going to work in, in practical reality. So the, the way that, that I see it is um, the Reserve Bank's going to um, replace the Nostra account that they currently run uh, for traditional core banking systems. So Nostra account being the bank account that the, the bank has at the Reserve Bank. So at the, every bank has to capitalize that to a certain value. Uh, during the day, transactions take place, and at the end of the day, they um, settle out the accounts. They have a, a process um, called RTGS, Real-Time Gross Settlement. So what they do then is, um, at a specific point in time, they, um, they settle um, that account and contras out. <clears throat> and that's how the Reserve Bank manages the money supply. And there's inherent risk in there because during the day, um, banks are taking effectively other banks' money, uh, or IOUs, um, and, uh, and so on. So now that all of that system can be replaced, and, and I, I don't know where the Reserve Bank is at. I know that their, their system's old. Um, they were looking at um, implementing a new one, uh, which was developed partly in-house. It manages the RTGS for all the banks. Um, you know. But now we're talking about digital currency and we're talking about replacing that with blockchain technology where there's a single blockchain that's run and the banks use that to do settlement and they tested that in, in, in projects. Uh, what was the name of that project? Okay. Coca. Coca. Mm. And uh, proved that it can work on a commercial basis and um, could, could serve for RTGS. So that's the blockchain there. But what you need at the retail level from a customer perspective is you need a blockchain that's faster than the one that they were using. And then you also have issues around um, what data is private and what data is shared and what data belongs yeah. to who. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so there are other issues there. But um, so what we're bringing is we're saying, well, we can um, buy the wholesale money um, because my understanding of what the bank wants to do is they want um, non-bank um, businesses to also be able to trade in this currency. So mobile operators, insurance companies, um, retailers um, who want to buy, just like they uh, buy notes and, and, and run treasuries and, and, and have to manage mm -hmm. their cash flows, etc. They'll be able to trade uh, in this um, directly at a trading desk um, run the reserve bank, but then you need a blockchain that can provide the real-time settlement in under three seconds, um, in not the wholesale, but in the retail um, currency. So the, um, right, that's our proposal to say, um, and this will make it ubiquitous um, because um, um, of, of the way that we, we're deploying it. But uh, all of this only works if if we can sandbox this new money, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, now, just in terms of what the requirements are for the sandbox application, right? And um, what are the sort of questions that they're asking? Primarily, um, how do we fit in? How do we perceive ourselves to fit into the current regulatory space? Because they're really testing regulation, so. Right. How do we fit into the current regulatory space? Where are the grey areas? Um, where do we think there isn't regulate or we're outside of regulation? And do they need to put an exemption in place for us to do this? Um, so it's really about making sure that the deployment is is uh, regulatory is, is satisfying the regulators at large, and and that they will also see whether the innovation justifies the stretch in legislation or the change in legislation. So really, we're enabling them to test their new regulation, their regula regulatory proposals, as well as the, the risks that they've identified. So one of the position papers we're putting together is actually just our analysis of the of the risks 
that we see and how our platform mitigates uh, those particular risks or our solution set because it is a solution set as well so it's a combination of it's not only the, the so, core part is that it goes into a much wider um space with the rest of the model so i guess each one of those regulators has got different concerns um you know the the standard stuff uh, anti money laundering and you know all of these things are going to be need need to be taken care of but from my understanding of what they're trying to achieve here with the sandbox is um in our application we need to focus on um what needs to be done differently because for me that's the you know i'm a i'm a pretty um inflexible um about certain things when it comes to designing the solution for the future of money um because i think if you break those mm. rules um you often will get immediate results that may that lead one to be tempted into these things but i think ultimately you're going to pay the price and that you're not going to achieve ubiquity um and that's also what makes uh makes this so hard and what makes the sandbox so compelling um is um mm. now um we can uh, we can go for it you know um and um we can do some some crazy stuff um and this um, is cuz cuz we we're in crazy stuff territory staggering no, listen, i've been, no, I've, no, spent, the, um, I've spent um i've spent a lot of time listening to to from the ground up through the south african people's coalition there's been a huge response it's been incredible but the reality is very very real and we do need to move now So I think I think Mary um you know the sandbox issue um we we're going to we're going to have multiple calls on it over the next couple of weeks we need to unpack it we need to get our our partners involved but um for me this is an opportunity the timing is just sublime now's the time to try crazy stuff um crazy stuff because it's not crazy stuff mm. it's just new it's not crazy stuff It's just, just new. new and the cool yeah. Yeah, absolutely cool thing about this is that um it's it is a collaboration with regulators we it allow, allows us to Isn't bring all beautiful? of our partners with we have it's incredible it's incredible it's it's, it's like a gift because we're going to get the best thinkers from all the regulators to look at this with the view to how do we protect south africa if we if this goes at scale and that's what we need we need an enabling environment that actually takes this stuff seriously because it is going to go at scale and and it's exciting to be able to walk this through with the partners we have we have incredible partners lining up around us in terms of how many utilities as well we're not discussing that now but you know essentially they'll come with us into this process the regulators will walk with us all and it's going to be in crazy it's going to be a fantastic process I'm very excited actually <laughs> regulation <laughs> yeah listen I, i'm uh, i'm as excited as you are and that makes us both uh, policy wonks <laughs> geeks and um geeks of um, <laughs> lives but anyway no 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 be that as it may um, um this is the chance to implement yeah. um, what we've been working on for many years um and i know that uh, the partners in the ecosystem are also uh, hugely excited um and yeah so yeah. um it's it's amazing we started off um this this new series of podcasts it was um, myself and Clayton now we're reaching out um, and we're going to reach out more and more to the wider ecosystem and and all the people and i think that's something you know we we're going to um we're going to need to do a couple of um uh, podcasts on on various things and i think one of the things is talking about uh, people who are listening to this want to participate um, in the sandbox and the management and because at the end of the day what we have to do um, and maybe maybe you can talk about the timelines in a sec but what we have to do is um we have to have a test plan right um the regulator will give us a case um a look case work and then someone assigned to um our project who will liaise uh, with all the various regulators and it's going to become a very, very intensive process So we need to have our test plan ready. We need to have identified what needs to be tested and vetted. Um you know what needs to be covered etc. So there's there's quite a bit of work to do and um we need to uh, get a team um working on that. 
So I think that probably in the next um, day or two, um, we'll be covering that um, and we'll be start uh, recruiting um, our dream team um, for the Sandbox, our Sandbox dream team um, um, to bring this home and to make sure that um, we put our best foot forward. Um, and um, um, so maybe Mary, you just want to, uh, want to talk a bit about the timing and the dates. So um, this week we're going to be <clears throat> discussing, basically making sure our core networks are updated and able to consider their own participation in the sandbox and what that would mean for them and how what they are able to pledge to. And we're asking them to actually, by the end of the week, give us a hands up, basically saying, yep, I'm in, this is what I can bring to the table at this by stage. By the end of the? This week. Okay, we, we have like an, a sort of an indication. Okay, an indication. So, yeah. Like we've got a few already. You know, people are saying yes, let's go. Right. And then in the next week, because we have got a very short timeline. So in the next week, we will then confirm all the use cases that we're testing and all the testing partners. So that's next week's job. And then we will scope each use case that we're testing with each partner. And then we have to submit. <laughs> <laughs> because we have a de deadline for mid-May or else we lose this opportunity. Yeah, so 15th of May, this has to be in, but I'd like to get it in probably by the 12th is the latest to give the, the guys. It's a big application. We're not just testing the issuance of one thing. We're testing the whole platform ecosystem opportunity. So um, I want to put it in a, just give ourselves a bit of time because if we don't, meet the May deadline then the next opportunity is only early next year and to get this level of regulatory oversight as we take the platform up is a prize. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah there can be no um, better opportunity ever um, to right. move um, financial inclusion forward um, than this um, and there's no better time than uh, now having moved our financial and economic challenges um, so much uh, further uh, along in terms of um, a solution needed to get us out of this mess that we're in. So I think that's it. Mary Brennan, all the way from Port Elizabeth. Thank you for um, taking time away from the dolphins to come and talk to us. From the dolphins, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Sunny. Keep on. Okay, nice. Brilliant process. Very proud to be on this team. Yeah. Absolutely.